people who are focused on the mastery part of the game are going to feel undercut by this variable progression. <gasps> Destruction makers. Sort of a trend that we've been seeing is that magic is sort of shifting as it shifts away from sort of competitive play and more towards casual play. Uh, the the way that a player feels like they're getting better at the game or or um, progressing uh, is has changed. The the focus has shifted. Yeah. Before we get uh, further into talking about progression today, uh, if you like our videos here on Distraction Makers, give us a like maybe consider subscribing uh and if you're really invested we have a discord we can define progression uh clump them together as vertical and horizontal progression um uh vertically uh the way i think about progression is i, I tend to have like th sort of six different categories of progression uh three for each horizontal and vertical uh one being mastery that's mastering the game interaction itself challenge is different challenges the game is sort of delivering to the player Variable is number going up. That's pretty standard. All that is vertical progression. Mm -hmm. Horizontal progression being a uh, toy. Uh, that's basically you playing with different types of decks. Not any deck is better or worse than the other, but that's just you playing with something different. Um, aesthetics, that's different you know, types of cards with different looks on them. Uh, deck boxes even, play mats, all that is aesthetic progression. And then social progression would just be like you being a member of the community expanding your vocabulary learning more about the game itself um so those are the different categories of uh, progression that i think of right okay so part of why i think um so many players are sort of kind of feeling this tension with what's going on in magic right now and you know we had a video come out uh, a little bit ago that was talking about how we're sort of seeing magic change uh and i think one of the the most uh the 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 intersection of change here is in the way that players are sort of being rewarded for playing the game now is that what is motivating a player in commander is much different than what motiv motivated a player in like one V one standard and that a player is playing one V one standard for sort of the vertical progression. Uh, and a lot of commander players are playing for the horizontal progression uh, in this variety and social and aesthetic kind of way yeah. where you know, uh, so so I think when um, it, it, it's kind of weird, right? Because in some ways you kind of want these two audiences to almost be separate from each other. At one point they were separate. And right. I think that's where we end up sort of seeing people like, I don't know. Uh, right. Bumping heads, I guess. Right. And so, so when those two player bases start to mix, you sort of get this mismatch in um, what those players value. And they they start to sort of be in conflict with each other. Uh, as those axes are are operating in two different directions, yeah. So you get sort of a a one v one style magic player come into a, a commander environment, and suddenly everybody's like the power level of everybody's deck st has to start coming up because they're more focused on how do I design my commander deck to do a thing and do it every time in a very efficient way, yeah. And a lot of the things that we end up talking about on our channel are are in that like okay, well you know, Commander was intended to be designed in this way that sort of uh, disincentivizes that style of play, but there still is an optimal way to play Commander. And the yeah. only way that people don't play optimally in Commander is by choice. This is why Commander in small groups works. It's great. Right? Yeah. Is that when your group, when, it, when you've all sort of gotten into the game at the same time and all of your sort of mastery levels are similar yeah. and you're sort of rising together, because inevitably you rise, there's nothing you can really do to stop that. Um, when you're in that environment, I think Commander can shine. Right. But when there's any kind of mismatch here. The minute one person leaves that cube or that group yeah. and they go and watch hundreds of hours of YouTube videos and get super into deck constructing and yeah. no one else does that, you're going to start button heads. Something's right. going to happen. Progression is an inevitability in any game. Um, it's just going to exist. Um, how far progression can go in different ways differs amongst games. Some games, there's not really a lot of toys to choose from or whatever. So there's not a lot of variety. Some games, very easy to master. Um, Magic has always had a very long tail of mastery. Yeah. Um, to well, try and... The so the, the design focus has been on mastery, right? That's right. That's kind of what we we're talking about in the previous video is that like when uh, the incentives of design and the player base are in alignment, um, it make it, 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 everything sort of clicks and makes sense, right? Where right. it's like, well, we're designing for mastery and we're expecting our players to be playing for mastery. 
Therefore, we are in alignment with our design decisions. And now that we're in the middle of this shift in this weird period of time, um, players who sought that mastery or have been playing Magic for it, like, and franchise players and playing a long time are going, what happened to my mastery? <laughs> right. You know? And I think that what has started to shift, um, it's been going for a little while. Uh, Wizards has uh, seemed to start leaning a little bit more into variable progression instead of right. uh, progression of mastery. Um, and so you're starting to see more power creep than we've seen in previous years. Right. Well, let's talk about variable, variable progression for a minute in terms right. of its <laughs> manifestation within magic. Right. So variable progression is just number go up. It's the most common form of progression that you end up seeing in games. And usually how variable progression used to work was if you got a basic land in a pack or whatever, and when you're building a deck, you go, oh, okay, great, a basic land. But then you get a dual land, and you go, oh, well, that's better than a basic land, right. probably, so I'm going to put that in my deck. That's variable progression. You have a card that is now just strictly better than a previous card. Right, and so like with Magic, um, as opposed to sort of maybe a, a, a digital game, and you can even see this on Magic Arena, they can yeah. kind of bring some of this in, is, is, you know, in a video game, you can have like a level, right? Like your character is level one, then level two, then level three magic doesn't really have that but right. you sort of can level up your individual cards right by broadening your collection right you you might have a shock in your deck and then you upgrade it to a lightning bolt at some right. point or something like that now it, it can get more fine-tuned but that is a, that's like a form of mastery of deck building because at some point it gets beyond like oh well yeah shock is worse than lightning bolt at a certain point you have to just you know figure out like well is this spell going to be more optimal for my deck right. than lightning bolt and that gets more complex right so so i think <laughs> that's what's so interesting here and one of the reasons why we probably have seen more power creep as of late yeah. is that when you're um the example of shock or lightning bolt right that's like really straightforward to a player they yeah. they read one card well this one does two damage for one for one red and this one does three damage for one, one red obviously i want the one that does three damage yeah and so it's a really easy way to um make a player feel like they are getting better like yeah. that their deck is better that they're better at the game that they have more power right like that that's like a really straightforward thing and that's usually why variable progression is utilized is it, like it's a really clear way to tell players hey you're getting better this is something that uh, especially games with younger demographics uh uh, relied on so the pokemon trading card game was very good at doing this still is very good at doing this and then the and Yu-Gi-Oh did this for a long time probably still does i don't know if sure did, but right and so when we look at sort of the uh power creep-esque progression of the past or complexity creep of the past uh it, it sort of relied on a player base that was much more focused on mastery right we had a, a player base that was really interested in um, intricacies of, well, you know, what archetype does this card go into? What role does it play in my deck? Where does it fall in my mana curve? How to, like, um, I did a bunch of other op things to consider, right? right? And now we've sort of shifted to a player base that is much less inter interested in that kind of stuff, and they're more interested in, um, you know, something that might just be more powerful. Like, yeah. I can read the numbers on the card and go, I know this card's better than the card that's in my deck. I'm going to swap those out. Right. And, um, you know, again, I, okay, I just want to be really clear that neither one of these is right or wrong. Right. They are just different. Yeah. I think there's going to be people that, because they're so uh, invested in past magic uh, and past magic's design philosophies, they're going to see this as like a, a full negative. So we posted <laughs> a video recently where yeah. we talk about how magic is changing um, yeah. and it's changing uh, more geared towards commander players. And it's so funny because we get a lot of people on here that are, I think, in a similar boat to you. They played a lot at one point in time. Now the game is kind of different. It's not something that they really are as invested in. They don't like Commander quite as much. And then we also get Commander people. They're just like, we just like Commander. So yeah. like, <laughs> it's like there's yeah. clearly an audience that is also into this. And they're, right. they are coming into this with that concept of variable progression. And it's not like a lesser game for these people well, i think i think where things get sticky is that um you know people who are focused on the mastery part of the game are going to feel undercut by this variable progression that's where i i think <laughs> yeah. the weirdness comes in and when we see like you know these tournament scenes uh falling apart because cards are just too powerful 
uh, that I think can become like, you start to sort of feel like, oh, I need to be protective of this. Uh, what's going on here? They're making these horrible mistakes. But in reality, they are just serving the majority of the audience, which you are not necessarily that anymore. And that's right. that's a frustrating experience Yeah, to feel like, well, this was my game. And now it feels like it's sort of slipping away. And I also think that commander players can feel frustrated because they're now on this track of variable progression that they don't necessarily want to be on, but they don't really have a choice. Yeah. If like one person in your group buys a new pre-con and you guys have been playing with cards that are five years old, suddenly everybody's got to buy new stuff because that pre-con is going to be way more powerful. Right. And where previously you may have been able to just sort of like sit back on a set or two, um way back in the day now you can't really do that and almost every single set there's always something new that people are like well this card's insane this card's so good it's you know it's like this old card that we all play in our commander decks but it's better now and so they just put <laughs> that in. right okay so let's talk a little bit then about drawbacks here with either kind of progression um vertible 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 vertical progression uh, you know, sort of solely focused on challenge and mastery, um, that can be hard to get new players involved in. Yeah. It's a very particular type of uh, player motivation uh, that, yeah, I mean, it's just not that appealing to some people. It, look, it, look at Elden Ring. Oh, right. The Souls games are like a great example of this because they right. have they have variable progression and it's almost laughably like, Doesn't irrelevant. Really do, right. um, it matters some, it matters but some. not a lot. And so, but yeah, that, that game franchise has grown over time, but it's very much a cult following up until Elden Ring yeah. and Elden Ring only worked because they allowed players ways of avoiding, um, some of the more challenging things. They allowed players this opportunity yeah. to get away from those things. It wasn't the entire experience. Right. And there's sort of another layer of, of, uh, God, no. Elden Ring's so good. Oh, oh, I love God. Elden Ring. Oh. Did you beat it yet? No, their, uh, their progression is just so, it's so fascinating. I'm just going to geek out about Elden Ring for a minute <laughs> just because like, um, the reason why Elden Ring works so well is because they have this sort of, uh, appearance of mastery progression that is still there and still relevant. Like, like Elden Ring is, has thread this needle in the way that magic wishes it could, I think. <laughs> in that bold words no i know i'm serious though let's think about this for a minute is that like the mastery progression of uh, a souls game in elden ring is still intact yeah in that the bot like you can fight the bosses whenever you want that's why you get these weird you know like takes like oh if you use summons then you didn't actually beat the game that kind yeah. of stuff that's where you, that's where this stuff comes from right. but like you as an individual player get to make that choice yeah and part of this is because you're not it's not versus other players right it's not a pvp game um so your your challenge uh, can be finely tuned to your type of progression, and they offer the opportunities for you to, if you're not as interested in strictly mastery progression, to go and explore, and then get more powerful that way. Yeah. Find new items, toy progression, whatever it's going to be, and then go back and and go back to the mastery. Yeah. And ultimately, you know, all roads lead to the mastery progression in order right. for you to finish the game. But you you're given these opportunities to uh, supplement wherever you wherever you want to as a player. Yeah. And it's your choice. If they're not making any of that choice for you. Right. Which is great. Any rate. Thanks, Miyazaki. God damn it. <laughs> we love you. Genius. Mm. <laughs> okay, so um so the, those are some of the, I guess, sort of the drawbacks of mastery progression is that it can be uh, hard to get new players over that hump into the game. Yeah. And some of the drawbacks of sort of this horizontal progression in terms of like aesthetic change or variety in toy progression, um, it can become cumbersome. Yeah. It, it adds be, a lot of complexity. And, and Magic time. has sort of both of these, right? There's a ton, like there's 30,000 cards. That's yeah. that's like how how much more horizontal can you get, right? Like 30,000 right. game pieces. <laughs> so um, you sort of have to, you know, in some ways, some of that stuff becomes irrelevant as like better cards sort of, you know, 
power creep out other ones. So, right. th- you know, we say 30,000, but like there's not 30,000 viable cards. But then you start to get into those cards. Viable. You start to get into those uh, trade-offs where y- you see some card that's like, oh, well, this card uh, destroys target creature or planeswalker, mm-hmm. uh, but also gives me this extra effect. This card also gives me an extra effect and lets me destroy target creature or planeswalker. Which one of those extra effects is better? And right. like, y- it gets way more complex because suddenly it's like you have the same effect same mana cost but it does sl- slightly different things right. and you don't know if that's a better or worse trade-off and well and what's uh, again what's really fascinating with commander is you can only have one copy of right. each card so like when you get cards that are sort of functionally equivalent you end up wanting all of them yeah uh and and in that way we can look at sort of the complexity that we're talking about and that commander makes that a lot worse <laughs> yeah right is that like you have uh, a card that, like you said, is you know two mana or whatever, destroy target creature, and you have another card that's two mana, destroy car- target creature. It has different art, has different uh, name, but it does functionally the same thing. Right. And now you have so many card, more cards that you need to hold in your head. Yeah. Um, and then we haven't got into the sort of the alternative art, secret layer stuff, adding yeah. another layer of complexity. It's another, it's another type of progression in that you can sort of make your deck look however you want. That's aesthetic progression that we're yeah. talking about, but. It comes at the cost of complexity. Yeah. So I think that there's going to be a lot of players that are really into different forms of that. But yeah. I think that, I mean, anyone that's shown or tried to show a uh, friend um, magic has probably seen their eyes glaze over as they're looking right. at a table just <laughs> full of random shit that they yeah. can't try and parse. Yeah. Um, and I think that it, you know, it, it's a sign of things progressing in this way. Right. Um, is as things have progressed you're seeing a table where it's like well that soul ring looks different from that soul ring which looks different from that soul ring and that card has two paragraphs on it and that card flips over and has other text on that and like (laughs) it's like yeah how are you gonna keep keep all of that in your head yeah and i think honestly i think that the foundations set coming out is going to be so important very excited for Uh, that you know as long as it's i mean i i don't I think now is the time. I think magic needs a little bit of a reset. All right, how do we wrap this thing up? Uh, lessons learned. Right. Design takeaways, things to consider. Um, different types of progression is very important. And also um, giving your players the choice uh, of, of sort of different ways that they want to progress. That's one thing magic has done pretty well. Uh, Elden Ring does really well. Um, however, you have to keep in mind that some of these types of progression can be in conflict. And that uh, if your your sort of mastery progression gets in the way of someone else who is looking for like social progression, you're going to have a, a conflict in your player base. Different players are going to have different interests depending on that type of game. Some players are not going to like something like, uh, I don't know, the Binding of Isaac or whatever that resets every single time and you don't get any sort of progress outside of that some players are going to be annoyed by that other players think it's really exciting and they really want to try and get better and they want to learn and become better players um and so i don't know no one progression is bad every bit of progression uh gives a different type of feeling to your game right there's different answers for different audiences yes